Awesome. Hey guys, welcome, welcome. This is Dr. Nancy Lee. Let me stop sharing the countdown timer right now. Okay. So great to have you guys and quick introduction about what we're doing today and who I am. I am Dr. Nancy Lee. I help people transition from worker bee to a manager and business leader. And today we're gonna have a special session for people who specialize, want to do 30 seconds elevator pitch. Um, we already have a few audience with us live with me on Zoom. Um, we also know this part of the live coaching is also available to everybody who submit request every week through the description of this YouTube live. You can submit your request for sure every week and some of you guys will be selected uh, to join me live uh, to receive a uh, free training as well. Okay, so a few housekeeping before we do live coaching to improve your 30 seconds elevator pitch. Let me do this. Let me start to um, share my screen. Okay. Let me do this one. Welcome, guys. Awesome. Okay. So, and this is YouTube Live we're going to go through today. And as I mentioned, today we do 30 seconds elevator pitch. Um, and also why we're doing all of this today was because actually lots of you guys and right now is about to graduate from college, master program, or PhD student. And actually today we have lots of people who are uh, actually PhD student and from Boston University, which is the school I got my PhD years ago. Um, don't ask me how I got started and when exactly I went to BU, uh, but I can tell you I started when I was two years old. And so now let's continue today's session. And lots of people ask, what do we do? And actually, we, I, I myself specialize in product management. In the past, I've helped hundreds of product managers who actually uh, became a product manager and actually land their dream product manager job offer. And as of yet, uh, last week, and um, actually our students received one of the highest offer in our program history. One of the students actually received uh, $800,000 per year uh, annual salary package from Meta L7 product management positions. Actually, very excited uh, to see those amazing offers and hope all of you guys can achieve the same kind of result as well. Um, and also a quick uh, reminder is that if any of you guys are preparing for your fan interviews, um, this is what you need to do and you can directly go to this site. So let me do this uh slideshow mode um you can directly go to this website and take a screenshot um right now where you're able to download the 50 fan interview questions database uh, so that you can use it for your mock interview and hopefully you can land your dream product manager job offer as well so go to the website documentsleet.com slash 50 fan and um, as because we have lots of um PhD students from Boston University actually working with uh, one of the uh, amazing uh, women's organization called Women in, I think it's called BU, Women in Engineering uh, program, right? I believe um, Alice, um, Parisa, and actually came from the, those kind of organization. Myself went to BU as well. And, but I do want to share a very inspiring story is actually related to students from Boston University and also anybody else who's currently um, in school. And what I wanna highlight is what I call this tier two school. And actually um, when I went to Boston University, if lots of you guys have gone through the same experience, lots of big tech companies such as uh, like Google or Apple or Microsoft, all those big fan companies, they do not recruit people directly from Boston University. And that was because in general, people are there to say, well, um, it's not our target school, but lots of time when students trying to go after those big schools and big tech companies, they always feel like, oh, you know what? We do not um, have this kind of background. And 
doors are never open for us. And but specifically today, I want to share different kind of examples and inspiring story for all of you guys. Actually, it's one of my students. His name is Pan. Um, some of you guys might actually know her because know him and because you guys went to the same school from Boston University. Um, himself actually was a PhD student in photonics engineering. Uh, when uh, like I think it was two years ago when he reached out to me and he told me that Nancy, um, I knew that those like fan companies um, never recruit from Boston University because we are tier tier two school to them. However, I really want to break the glass ceilings. Um, just tell me how exactly I can make it happen. All right. So eventually, like. Um, few years later, even before he got his PhD, he was able to land two offers, one from Apple, one from, one from Microsoft. Okay. Um, so what I, the story I want to share with you guys, the lesson learned was that it actually really doesn't matter what kind of school you go to, what kind of background you had. What it matters is that are you determined to really make it happen? And do you use the right methodology and right guidance uh, to make it happen? And actually, Penn made the decision about like two years ago, even before, two years before he landed a PhD, um, he, because he really wanted to get a job in the fan company. So he was able to prepare really early, um, really being able to break the glass ceilings, being able to become uh, one of the very first early uh, fresh graduate PhD from Boston University was able to land actually two fan offers. Okay, so right now I think he still hasn't finished his PhD yet, but he was able to already land two fan offers before he graduate. So today I'm gonna share with you guys how you guys who join me live right now being able to get the same kind of result as well um, using the 30 seconds elevator pitch framework we invented, okay? Um, and also one remind, quick reminder for everybody who is currently in the process um, and preparing to land your dream product manager job offer. Um, and I have a free webinar coming up. You can go to this website, docnancy.com slash, uh, uh, slash masterclass to learn the free masterclass will teach you how to land your dream product manager job offer within 60 days. Um, and of course, always please make sure you uh, directly figure out how to get free coaching. And usually we get free coaching directly for people who, who support the nonprofits through the one-on-one -on -one donation matches. Um, in the past couple of years, we are, I might personally always double my donation to any of the nonprofit. If you're also a big believer in nonprofit, you will get prioritized to go through free coaching with me. And also whoever had the most likes, comments, and shares of my YouTube content, you will get selected as well. Um, feel free to directly fill in this form in the description of this video. Okay, where uh, you can directly submit the forms to review any kind of elevator pitch, resume questions, or mock interviews, you'll be able to uh, join me live today. Okay, just everybody who is live with me right now. Okay, great. All right. So, uh, and also a quick celebration. That's all the offers we had. Uh, as I mentioned, actually, we have so many offers. One of those offers actually landing uh, 800 grand offers from Meta. Uh, we also have so many offers directly, um, like from like APM offers all the way to like a direct level offer or senior program manager offer in the past, just within last week. So I want all of you guys to achieve the same kind of result as well. Awesome. Okay, so let's get into today's session where specifically we talk about the 30 seconds elevator pitch. Um, at here, let me quickly walk you guys through this specific framework. Um, the, um, right now, actually, Prisa and Alice, and you guys can turn on your camera because we go into this live coaching right now. Okay, so feel free to turn on your camera. Um, now, before you guys come in, I believe and Alice and Prisa, and you should receive the email from the notification saying, hey, please make sure you prepare your 30 seconds elevator pitch uh, to get a review with me. Um, so make sure you get your pitch ready or have some kind of ideas, okay? Um, and here, let me first of all, walk you through the specific framework, and then we're going to review your pitch. And, and believe me, after we uh, modify your pitch, you, you're going to stand out all of the, uh, the competition. Okay, so let's give it a try. All right, so first of all, when we talk about the 30 seconds elevator pitch, I want you guys to really think about it. The pitch, how do we use a pitch, right? So the pitch usually was when you go to networking event or when you directly go to any like um, 
big tech companies, you meet some like recruiters or the first round interview and hiring manager will ask you, so tell me about yourself, right? So those kind of interviewing questions. And when those kind of questions happen, you need to use a 30 seconds elevator pitch framework. Um, so before you guys came in, to this live training and the organizer should already send you this free like six minutes video where I teach you guys high level examples how you answer this question tell me about yourself this is 30 seconds elevator pitch framework i just mentioned and and here let me uh quickly walk uh, walk you through this process so usually in terms of the pitch you really need to understand your goals um why and who you want to pitch to all right, so let's do this. Um, let me directly uh, pick out the process. All right, so first of all, let's define who we want to pitch to. Let's say you want to go out for uh, interview process, right? People ask you about, so tell me about yourself. Even if they're talking about tell me about yourself, the whole process to, is trying to understand are you a good fit for the specific role you are applying for, right? So understand who that is. Uh, and then when you talk with the pitch, you go through the following four steps. Step number one is what's your name, right? Come up with very easy. My name is Alice. My name is Brisa, whatever you want to uh, like highlight your name. And the second part is you should start to think about your summarized years of experience related to the specific job. Right. So what kind of job I'm applying for and the year's experience related to that kind of job. And then you give them the high level overview regarding a very impressive story you, you had before. So people that heard it, they're going to fall off the chair. And finally, you have a call to action in terms of you want to land job there or you can say I'm the, the, the top one percent candidate and I believe I'm good fit for this role so, or any kind of call to action you want to have towards the end of the pitch. But most importantly, we need to really think hard how we package your very short and concise impressive story of yourself and how is that relevant to the type of job you're applying for. OK, so let's do this. Um, given this live coaching, um, let's pick somebody. Um, so Alice, let's do this. So can you tell me what specific jobs you're applying for? Or I assume you're applying for jobs or in general, or maybe or in a networking scenario, how should I introduce myself? Tell me about what the scenarios you want to craft your 30 seconds elevator pitch. Sure. So um, uh, I'm actually uh, in a master's program, um, so I have still a bit more to go before um, before I go for job interviews. Mm -hmm. However, I, it's important that I have conversations early on with specific companies that I'm ultimately interested in working for. Mm -hmm. And so having the elevator pitch is helping me expand my network um, with those companies. Um, does that answer your question? Um, can you tell me what kind of industry? And also when you join, do you know what kind of role would you apply for? Sure, so um, biomedical engineering, I'm specifically interested in medical devices. Um, I'm looking for a technical product manager um, on the uh, R&D side of a large corporation like Boston Scientific, Stryker, Medtronic. Very cool, very cool. So I like you have a specific goal. So right now, because you're not graduating yet, you just want to make a connection with them, but your goal receiving the offer, let's say after you graduate, let's say a year later, I, I assume a year later after you get a P, uh, your master is the same. I want to join you guys as a technical product manager working for those device company, right? So when you go out for a networking event, let's say you meet somebody who are a recruiter or could be a hiring manager or could be a product manager themselves, or anybody in those kind of R&D department, at least they're relevant to the kind of jobs you're, uh, you're, you're going to target at, right? So when you get started, you give them a short in introduction of yourself. You can tell them, hey, my name is Alice. Um, I currently, I am a master's student in bioinformatics from Boston University. And that's it, right? So a quick introduction of who you are. And then, you should give them the overview of summarized experience you have related to the technical management or 
like medical device. You can choose either or. Um, the key is that you want to make it as relevant as possible and as impressive as possible. So let, let me ask you this question. Do you have technical product management experience? I do, I yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how many years do you have? Uh, over eight. Yeah, then you can tell them that, hey, I already are in the medical device industry. No, not in the medical device industry, which is why I'm going back, why I decided to go back. Um, I was, I worked in software. So um, oh. I'm, looking, I'm looking to transition from the software industry into the uh, medical device industry. I see. So you're doing reverse track as as of my students. Say it again. You're doing the reverse track of my students. So lots of my students, they came from, so I ran a program called Product Manager Accelerator. Uh, so which is for people who want to become a technical product manager or product manager or non-technical, any kind of product manager in software industry, in tech industry. So it, you're, you're going backwards, not backwards. You're going the opposite direction, going to the medical device industry. I see. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so let me also ask you this question. Given you already have eight years of uh, technical product management experience, how many years experience do you have regarding law? Uh, medical device i assume not that much right none no. okay great so given your final goal is tpm in medical device industry um i will do this you say i have a year's experience in technical product management and like a master degree in uh, like biomedical so that you have a combination of both you know, so eight years experience knowing the domain knowledge as a TPM. And then your experience uh, related to the medical device through your school. So you mentioned both in the short summary, eight years experience in the product management and like a master degree uh, uh, and a master study um, in the uh, like medical device industry. So you have a summary. And then after you do that, you should give them the most impressive story of yourself. For example, what's your biggest achievement? Can you tell me um, your biggest achievement right now? Probably um, launching a multi-million dollar life science product um, from the ground up um, for for a, the software company I worked for. Uh, slow down. Multi-million life science product. Okay, yeah. hold on. It's a life science product that's not medical device. So it's yeah. but, yeah. but still in the healthcare industry. Am I right? Correct. Yep. Um, okay. So... Um, so what the, besides the revenue you just mentioned, what the impact to the customers? Um, so, I mean, customers being life science industry, um, were able to um, gain, answer questions, um, health economics and outcomes research questions. Um, that they had about their products relative to other products on the market and how their products performed, um, say, in treating particular disease state. Hold on. Let me understand. It's a, it's a compare. So after using your product, they're able to compare the existing science product with other people's product to Correct. see how effective their medicine is. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, have a, I have a friend working for Genetech. I think she's doing something very similar. Okay, I see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and also the product, it sounds like it's a software product that yeah, they can use to do comparison. Got you. Um, so tell me, hold on. The kind of impact besides revenue impact, that sounds very impressive. Um, I want to see what is impact to the customers. So they're able to do comparison. So, so what? So that they're able to create 
um, or launch how what kind of medicine to save how many millions of lives so something like that do you know can you can you fill in the blank for me often when um once a, a drug company is released um you know medication right um go up leading up to the release there are a number of clinical trials they have to go through and then post clinical trial post approval FDA approval um, and they release their drug then they do additional studies that are more general and broad-based studies um, that can be slow and difficult to acquire data and so by um, a by aggregating that data for them and driving insights it helps speed this is me stretching right but it, it helps them um, more quickly understand how how effective their drugs are relative to competition and relative to how their drug performed uh, during clinical trials. So that they're able to save the time. Sure. Uh, or so that they're able to increase the success rate of passing the clinical trial from on average 10% to 80%. Like, which one is it or both? Tell me more. It's after clinical. So, um, this it's, is after, okay. Yeah, it's after clinical trials. So, you've already gotten approved. Um, right. So, it's more the speed. It's more, it's more, yeah, probably early insights into their medications. Um, and again, um, real world. Um, effectiveness of their drug relative to others. Um, do you also have, are all your, com uh, your customers, are they all Fortune 500 companies and all very famous? Yeah, they were, they um, absolutely. Okay. All great. your big names. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, great. So, uh, you do this. After your summary, you talk about the most impressive story of yourself. You say, I've launched multi-million dollars project that help life science companies to measure the effectiveness of their like uh, medicine or whatever clinical, whatever trial medicine or whatever result um, and to improve the effectiveness of their product. And so then that this specific product I launched has been used by Fortune 500 uh, Fortune 500 companies or the top 10 the pharmaceutical companies in the world. You need to show them the impact. So here thing, as I said, so the impact you need, you either need to show them in terms of, hey, there is a number of people who's using this, the, the or any kind of outcome, or your customers is very big. Right or you you make it like twenty percent faster or one hundred percent faster. Okay. So sounds like your impact is more the type of company that are very famous, all the big names or uh, or like all the top ten, whatever they want to help you, right? You, or you yeah. can say this 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 product has been used by all the like top pharmaceutical companies in the world. Or yeah. this product has been used by 1% of the Fortune 500 pharmaceutical company in the world, or whatever you want to describe, so that we know this product you, uh, you have launched is very successful, and almost all the big tech, not big tech, the big pharmaceutical company has been using the same kind of product. Okay. Okay. And then yep. towards, uh, and, and then, um, so this one of those. And at the same time, do you also have anything you want to add? Anything you're proud of regarding medical device? Um, I'm specifically interested in a subset of medical devices. Tell me more. Um, and I, that I really want to work on. Um, so. What is it? Um, I'm interested in what are called neural prosthetics. Um, so they're devices um, that um, they could be like spinal cord stimulation devices or deep brain stimulators, 
Um, and they're often um, used to treat patients that have neuro like a neurological or neurodegenerative disease. Um, did your current school work or any of your project has anything to do with this? Yes, yes. Um, the, I mean, the school work is yes. I'm. I'm. That's my focus. Okay. Um, so, did you have any project or besides studying on the same topic? Not yet. Okay. So, and then you can just add one more sentence and saying that um, right now I am in my master program, um, like uh, specialize in whatever the neuro. Sorry, it's not my domain. I don't even know how to describe neuro whatever pathetic. <laughs> sure. Domain you're you're working on, um, and right. So and then you you end with a strong call to action. You say, um, "I like to apply my eight years uh, technical product management skills along with my expertise in like neuro whatever the, the subdomain you talk about, and and to join a medical device company and impact millions of people's life." You can do that. And then you also depends on who you talk to. If it's somebody who is currently working for the company, you can and you can say, um, wow, I see that you have been working for Metronics right now. I love to connect with you and uh, and understand how did you make the transition into the industry or how whatever you you build your like a medical device product or whatever that's relevant to that person. Okay. And so that's towards the end. You'll learn more about Yayati, about this person, and then you exchange contact information, networking event. Makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. So the key um, to have a very strong pitch is that um, you just want to make sure other people feel like, whoa, this is next Steve Jobs. That's all they want to feel like. The, the reason is whenever you go to networking event, there will be thousands of people out there, or especially mm -hmm. right now it's virtual networking event, right? Um, and now how are they able to select you versus thousands of fresh graduates, right? Or you're not fresh graduate, actually have eight years experience. You just want to make a transition, right? Um, how would it compare you with so many people who want to get into their company? So you make it very memorable um, by highlight all your big achievement. And then you also emphasize on your schoolwork or anything you have done regarding the subdomain you, you're interested. I also suggest you in the upcoming uh, like year in your studying, you should start to do some project or master thesis or anything you want to do um, so Absolutely. that you can, you can replace the second sentence by changing from my schoolwork about ABCD uh, and change it back to I have done A, B, C, D project that whatever improve people's life using this neural yada yada you the subdomain talk about, and then your pitch will become stronger and stronger, and the same pitch can be used for your upcoming interview as well. Great, that's really really helpful. Thank you. My pleasure. Good luck. Keep me posted. Okay. Um, you guys have my email. You guys choose, uh, or if you don't, I'll uh, ask the organizer. So my email is nancy.nancy.com. You should you keep me posted. I really want to see where you land, um, where you end up with. Um, to be very frank, I, I believe all the medical device and all the important uh, medical inventions are very, very uh important especially during covid or post covid i believe people need to pay close attention to the growth of the entire healthcare space love to see yeah, that agreed. on youtube um please answer your questions um or please ask please post your questions on youtube live because i'm gonna answer your questions next um so put your questions there at the same time um alice and liz do you have any other follow-up questions no i don't have any questions no, nope. awesome. Then I, let me directly um, answer questions here. So on YouTube, we have someone post a question saying that, uh, love how you are breaking down how to show the impact qualitatively and quantitatively. Yes, yes. Thank you. So we have um, Eva, Daniel, JB, and Ed, Edward with us. Awesome, awesome. Okay, great. And let me see, do you have any other questions? Cool, All right. So if 
we don't have any other questions. Let me do a, a quick um, house quality. Hold on, hold on. And the quant hold on. I was able to play this. Where's my deck? Yes, let me bring up my deck. So let me do this quick housekeeping as a reminder. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys my screen very quickly. Awesome. Okay, great. So we went through uh, the pitch. Um, so final reminder is that if anybody who is interested in becoming a product manager in the big tech company, um, you can directly uh, uh, scan the barcode right now and uh, take a screenshot uh, and then join those two groups. One is our WeChat group. The other one is free LinkedIn group where we people go there to find mock interview partners. You can take a screenshot right now and, and scan the barcode. Okay, then join us uh, later on. Hopefully you're able to find lots of uh, people with similar background like you guys and also very motivated to really get into the next level as well. Okay, so it's very important to find the right communities, especially during the uh, COVID time. Awesome, awesome. Okay, great. So let me see, do I have any follow-up questions? Um, all right, so we have two more questions here. I have great startup company and agency um, product management experience. Most fan companies want enterprise experience, how to best address this. Um, Daniel, I don't think so. I don't think most fan companies want enterprise experience. Um, we have students who like, first of all, they don't even have experience to join fan companies. And second, we do have students, one of my students actually only had like, um, what is a company? Actually, he was working for a five person startup. He, he was able to join like Uber as a product manager. So we have lots of students who didn't have any like big enterprise experience uh, to be able to join fan companies. So um, um, I want you guys really change your mindset as more about you're using the wrong strategies in terms of networking, your interview skills, and how you write your resume. Um, so that I believe that's a true reason instead of other reasons you think you're working on uh, uh, for startup company. And actually, I believe that startups experience is one of the things um, lots of people, especially big tech companies, really value. And so I want you guys to change your mindset and learn how to improve yourself um, instead of just uh, thinking they won't hire you. I think there's a great opportunities you're able to join them. Actually, it's the opposite. I, I really like uh, startup experience. Um, actually, they do as well, especially when you go to Meta. They will tell you they love startup experience. Okay. Um, uh, Avish asks this question How do you do that in early years of your career? All right. In terms of the talking about your achievement, and you mean how do you package your achievement in the early years of your careers? And the, the way to do that is. You need to compare start, yourself with your um, peers. Actually, they do as well, especially when you go to Mana. Oh. Mm -hmm. And it will tell you they love startup experience. Uh, or Liz, can you mute yourself? Okay. Um, for example, so when where we are right now, hold on, let me put the questions here. How do you do that in early years of your career? So let me... What's my deck? So it's easier if I answer questions this way.
Oh, by the way, Liz and Alice, if you guys want to job, feel free to job. I'm not offended at, at all uh, because we finished all your live coaching already. Um, but feel free to stay for sure because we have lots of great questions coming up. So people ask this question, how did you do that in early years of your career in terms of talking about your achievement? Um, so the way to do it is that even if you have let's say less years of experience or say zero years of experience, right? So this happened to our students to give you some random example, one of my student, Rachel, she also goes to Northeastern University, right? So she was able to land uh, like a Microsoft for manager job offer with zero uh, experience. But when we package her like impact her achievement, even if it's zero years experience, she has something to talk about in terms of, let's say she can compare uh, herself with her classmate in terms of she was number one in the class or how fast she did side project or any kind of achievement you can compare with your peers can also be used uh, to highlight your achievement as well. Okay, so let's bring up the next question. Um, okay, we have lots of questions coming up. Uh, next question is here. I have product management experience, but only in manufacturing industry. How do I transition and apply to tech industry? Um, I'm interested in mid-sized startup or fan. Uh, very good question. And first of all, you need to use your strengths in terms of, hey, I already have product management experience. The only thing I need to do is change my industry. If you want to change your industry, first of all, you need to really understand how the big tech companies and build product. It's very important to really realize how your manufacturing, like product management experience is different from fan companies or startup or big tech companies. Understanding the differences will help you to repackage your story. And second, when you go in interview with those kind of companies, you really need to identify certain kind of fit in terms of, hey, um, I have built part of portfolio in the tech industry before. Well, anything that's relevant to your future job, that's where you need to highlight uh, in your entire resume and also pitch to, to the company. And let's say you have, you have no clue how the tech industry run, you need to start from scratch in, in terms of learning how do they run, how do they run product. Um, if you don't have it, you got to build it. Okay, so also let me give you an inspiring story. One of my students, she was an accountant. This happens so many, it happens every day, actually. Uh, one of my students, she was an accountant. Um, she was able to land uh, like three offers. One of the offer came from Meta as a TPM in the AI industry, right? So she was changing industry. She working on AI, but she was an accountant. She also had two years career gap. She also was... Uh, a mom, a new mom as well. Okay, so she has so much challenges, but she was able to make the shift, um, but she used the same kind of strategies I just told you earlier. So it's more about your strategies, how you prepare, um, um, then can can I make it happen or not? Okay, very cool. Um, let me bring up next question. Oh, another thing is, I also want to give you more examples. Okay, so I will have a student who was in like, car dealer. He was a car dealer. We have this kind of examples every time. I just want to really want to bring out this. That's crazy. He was a car dealer for three years. He has his own shop. He's a car dealership. All right. But he was, he made enough money in the car dealership. I really want to join tech industry, but he was able to join uh, like tech industry as a senior PM. Um, and that senior PM position asked for six years for the management experience. He was able to easily make the transition. Um, by using the right methodology. So that's what you need to do using the right methodology. So if you want to learn how can you achieve the same result as people in my product manager accelerator, you can go to this uh, website, darknancy.com slash masterclass to learn more about how can you make it happen as well. Um, so go to this website, darknancy.com slash masterclass uh, to learn more about PM accelerator. You can take a screenshot right now and learn and stay until the end of the talk. Okay, um, now, so let me answer the next question. Um, uh, 
So Emily said product management experience. Oh, you said you have eight years experience in manufacturing. Very good. Uh, so I need to join the group and get mentored in the right way to interview for them. You mean, let me answer your original questions. Um, okay, so let me combine these two questions together. Hold on, let me show, let me put this question here very quickly. So this question is this one. Uh, let me bring both questions up one sec. So the second question from Danielle is this one. This side, the cursor is not working. Okay, let me move them up. Okay, so he mentioned earlier, I had a great startup company and an agency product management experience, but most fan company want enterprise experience. Well, how to best address this? As I mentioned, um, actually they do um, hire people with startup experience. Actually, they like people with startup experience. I answered this question earlier, but his follow-up question is, so I need to join a group and get mentored in the right way to interview for them, um, yes. And you need to really learn the right methodology to interview for them. As I said, it's more about how you highlight your strengths, you package, and also really identify your gaps, right? So if nothing to do with the tech industry or fan companies, you really need to understand what they're looking for and how to repackage them. But for sure, they definitely hire lots of people from startup experience. That's 200% for sure. We have students from startups and join fan companies Right. So 200 percent for sure. Now, the answer is yes, you do need to get some mentorship and really what the right way to do it. Um, here is a group. Um, you can take a screenshot again if you missed it. OK. And if you want to join our exclusive communities in the PM Accelerator, you can check out this free webinar and still until a uh, stay until the end um, to learn more about it as well. You can take a screenshot right now. Okay, so let me go back to uh, answer the next question. Um, okay, you say six years experience. Um, you have six years experience and, and currently senior product manager in current company and use for uh, Draper startup, a house. Um, hey, I believe you have very good experience, Daniel. Um, I believe it's more about your interview skills, your packaging, your pitch as well. It's not about um, the fan company to not hire people like you. All right, actually they hired lots of people like you guys. And as I mentioned, one of my students actually land $800,000 per year job from Meta. Um, he's getting at the L7 uh, level. So we are very excited to make it happen um, for him. And, yeah, hopefully you can achieve the same result as well, but you definitely have what it takes um, to join them. It's more about the packaging, okay, and the strategy. Awesome, okay, great. So I believe I answered all the questions. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so you guys, if you uh, find this free coaching helpful, please make sure you share this content with anybody else and also um, give a sum up to any of my YouTube channel because the more, uh, you share the more people watching this and more likely we'll continue to give you guys free coaching as well okay welcome welcome all right see you guys gonna see you guys next